Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our first ever virtual lunch meeting in partnership with Huntley and Wound Express. Um, a huge thank you to you all for joining us. We're well aware how busy you are, so I promise you we'll do everything we can to keep to our 45 minute time slot. Um, the purpose of our new virtual lunch meetings are to allow you to access the product information that you need. New launches, new innovation, appropriate product use and product education. And we genuinely hope they're of interest and please feel free to provide us with any feedback after the event. Today's title is called Innovation in Wound Care, a Real Game Changer, an Introduction to Wound Express. And our fabulous speakers are Professor Keith Harding, Alison Schofield, Karen Staines, and our fabulous patient, Susan Tyler. Good afternoon all, how are you guys? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, our speakers are uh, presenting this event from a variety of different locations all around the UK and the world. So if we have any technology issues, please bear with us. I promise you we'll sort them out as soon as possible. The event will be available on our Facebook page and we'll also put it up on our website, jcm.co.uk, where you can watch the event again, but you can also download the slides. The link for your certificate of attendance will be made available at the end of the event, and this will also count towards your revalidation portfolio. As the speakers will confirm, the more involved you are, the better it will be for them and for the event in general. So feel free to use the comment bar for your comments, and also please ask any relevant questions you have of our healthcare professionals or our patient, and they will endeavor to answer as many as possible at the end of today's event. Uh, before we start, a big thank you to Huntley for your trust, belief, and support over the last few months for our first ever virtual lunch meeting. It means a great deal to me and the team, so thank you very much. So without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to today's first speaker, Professor Keith Harding. Thanks very much, Ed, and uh, thanks for inviting me to join into this session. In terms of innovation uh, and innovation in wounds, an awful lot more potential needs to be realized. This is an example, and I, it's important to note, this is a patient coming into my clinic, not leaving my clinic, when we talk about compression systems, that there is considerable room for improvement. And one of the things that's important is to actually recognize that compression, although for many of us, often used for treating leg ulcers, can be used for a wide variety of other conditions. Although the top three uh, diseases listed here are the major uh, reasons why you use it, you can look at other reasons, including cardiac edema, renal edema, nutritional edema, dependent edema, and go on to all these others. And I might state that at the end of that, that list, any swollen leg that does not have ischemic or active inflammatory disease may be a, a, a leg that's suitable for compression. Hugo Parch, in this review of compression published a few years ago, identified the major effects of, of compression in assisting uh, healing of leg wounds. And it is important to recognize that although it may be seen as many as only a bandage or a stocking on a leg, uh, those interventions are having an effect on the pathophysiology of blood flow in the limb and on the healing of any ulcers that may be present. So if compression has been around for such a long time, why isn't it used more appropriately and more professionally and more consistently? In this review, this Wounds International Consensus document that I was uh, associated in developing, we recognized there were three main factors influencing compression. These include factors within the healthcare system, including reimbursement and a lack of specialist services through to clinician factors in, uh, that include lack of knowledge, either in diagnosis, the importance of compression or how you differentiate different systems through to lack of referral path pathways. And finally, also patient factors, where one of the things that's a challenge to the patient is to convince them that the compression system you are using on their leg has an important therapeutic effect and may assist healing quite significantly. 
But if you look at the current practice today, and not only in the UK, uh, internationally, 50% of patients treated with multi-layer bandaging systems are non-concordant. Many patients find difficulties in getting the compression therapy applied, either from a, a health professional point of view or from a family or a self-applied point of view. The other thing that's also important is to recognize the importance of in, 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 independence and self-efficacy for patients when they're given more control of their own form of uh, treating swollen legs. So I'd like to share with you what I consider to be uh, a potential game changer in this uh, uh, aspect of wound healing, namely compression, which is uh, this device here, Wound Express. This is a paper that we published in 2019 following our initial experience of using this device. And here we're using a device that applies uh, compression to the thigh while you continue to apply normal standard compression to the lower limb. Basically, the results said that it was safe and it had benefits for patients. It consists of two components, a three-chamber thigh garment and an electric pneumatic compression pump. Now, although uh, intermittent pneumatic compression has been used on the lower limb and the lower leg, of, of the lower, lower part of the leg on the lower limb for some time, this is novel because it's uh, applying that compression to the thigh. We've carried on and gained the experience and thought, hang on, the, the, the initial 21 cases showed such promise, we needed to look at it in more detail. So I just want to share with you three case studies, this 50 year old female with a venous leg ulcer. The important thing is that they were using compression uh, at the standard form, uh, but then adding on to that wound express for 16 weeks, won't be used for two hours a day. And the interesting thing is the fact that if you look at the images of this patient's wounds, you can see from week zero to week 16, they have the wound has reduced in size dramatically. Another example is a 27-year-old male uh, with uh, thrombophilia uh, and complex venous disease, again, in combination with standard compression therapy, uh, produced benefits for him. And the fact that he was able to use uh, his uh, thigh compression device, uh, as well as continue with his uh, normal routine on a day-to-day -day basis. And here's his images here. You'll see that it got bigger at week eight before it got smaller at week 16, but this was due to an intercurrent episode of infection, which was treated, uh, and then we uh, turned that patient from non-healing to healing. Case three is a 70-year-old female, again with a venous leg ulcer, and the important thing here is the fact that although we produced improvement, more importantly, this was a patient who was more than happy to say uh, that it had improved her quality of life. And here's the uh, three images uh, on, on this patient here showing significant improvements over that 16 week period. The feedback from our ongoing experience of, of using this new device is that we believe that this is a useful addition to the existing therapy options that we have. It's easy to use. We've had positive results in every patient we've treated. We've had significant reduction in pain levels in a large number of patients. And there's also been a consistent reduction in wound size following use of this device. So in conclusion, maybe when we're looking at compression, we don't have to rely on the angels quite as much. This is the patron saint of leg ulcers, St. Peregrinus. This is a church in Vienna, and with the red circle around it is the angel in the bottom left-hand corner that's bandaging the leg. The important thing is that based on our experience, based on our uh, consistent benefits that we've seen accrued to patients, we've now very fortunate to obtain sufficient funding to undertake a randomized controlled trial of using Wound Express in combination uh, with a standard compression against standard lower limb compression. And we hope that we'll be able to confirm our suspicion that this is a device that conveys significant benefits to patients. Hopefully I've set the scene. Can I now hand on to Alison who will follow on? Thanks Keith, good afternoon everybody. Um, so I just want to share with you a case study um, in my trust, which is in the NHS in uh, Northern Lincolnshire and Gould. 
Um, now we, we have um, a lot of patients, as you all do, dealing with chronic leg ulceration, both in their own homes with district nurses. And we also have a, a chronic wound clinic, which has predominantly patients with leg ulceration. So this is the story and journey of one lady who is a 73 year old patient and she's had chronic leg ulceration since 1995. Um, now, you know, you will agree that is a long period of time to have a wound and to be continuous suffering. So the scenario was that she presented to the GP and would also go under the care of the practice nurse clinic. She'd um, receive dressings, antibiotics, it would heal, then reoccur. Um, but we must remember there's a lot of patients in the system who still are not getting those early referrals into specialist clinics and getting the appropriate lower limb assessment, which includes the ABPI, and then we can ascertain if they're suitable for compression therapy. So this lady has had this long period of venous disease and also she has an underlying condition of rheumatoid arthritis, which we know is an autoimmune condition and also has a big impact on healing. So she had a mixed variation, mixed etiology also, which you'll see from the photographs that we show you in a moment. So eventually, um, the lady was referred into the leg ulcer clinic in 2015. So quite a long time since she initially started her journey. At that point, she had that in all important lower limb assessment, and it was deemed she was suitable for compression. She had this applied in bandage form and the leg ulcer went on to fully heal. Now, in January of this year, the leg ulcer occurred. When the patient came into the clinic, she said she stopped wearing the maintenance class two hosiery and at times applied the, the liner, which is, was just 10 milligrams of mercury. So she wasn't getting the accurate therapy that was required for her venous return. So the treatment then plan then started with particular dressings and she it was managed and with the extra date within a dressing. So then she had a compression wrap system applied so, we were, so she could um, do some self shared care there too. Now, when Wound Express became known to us, um, we were very keen to, to, to trial this. And this particular lady was a very good subject because obviously she's had ulceration for a long period and we wanted to see if we could help her much further. The clinic staff came to me and said, is there anything else you can think of? And I said, I, you know, we, let, let's have a look at this. I've heard some good results from such as Keith and Karen that you'll hear from Accelerate. So, you know, so, so we gave this a try with this patient's consent. So you can see the image here. So, the, um, so there's a before and after of just um, four weeks of usage. So you can see the ulceration at that inner ankle area. She's got that mixed etiology. She's got maceration. Um, the surrounding skin is excoriated. And she was in quite a bit of pain also from this. So after just four weeks, you can visibly see there the reduction in size and the surrounding skin is much improved and the color to a whole of a leg improved too. So currently we're at the six week period of this trial and so it's continuing at the moment. So we're expecting good results um, at, at the very end. So the patient importantly is applying the wound express each day. So it's applied to the thigh. She reports it's comfortable. It's easy to apply and use. She sits on an afternoon or evening, the leg up on the sofa for two hours. Um, and she describes it as quite a nice massaging effect as well. So we have a shared care with the clinic with dressings and compression wrap systems. So the whole thing she can do some days herself and another week she'll come into clinic and then she has the um, the evaluations and the assessment that's required for the, the, the trial that we're doing. So we can report a decrease in size, the wound is much more viable, the condition of the surrounding skin has improved and she's experiencing less pain. And let's remember, sometimes the goal isn't just healing, it's about that symptom management as well. Odour, less pain, less exudate. So we know we've had this period of COVID-19 and that's had a big impact on all services and in tissue viability, some of the leg ulcer clinics shut closed, ours did too. And so we were trying to get some patients into that shared care, self-care type of pathway. 
So by using the wound express, we can see from the evidence we've got the effectiveness with it, but it's also encouraging patients to take an active role in their own care. So we're giving them that autonomy. And you know what? A lot of patients are happy with that. We're changing that historical nurse role where we say, no, we're doing the dressing, don't touch the dressing, and we're turning that on its head. And that's what we need to do as with other disease management that happens. So we've got really, really positive feedback from our patients on the ease of use of this, and they can just do it in their own homes. So it's, it's a great innovation and, and we're really happy with it. So thank you. I'd like to hand over to the uh, fabulous Karen Staines from Accelerate Now. Hi, Karen. Hi, yeah. Thank you very much, Alison. Thank you. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to be sharing with you uh, not just individual case studies, but I'm going to be in, uh, sharing with you our journey with Wound Express. That's our journey within Accelerate. So we started the evaluations back in the summer of 2019, which um, you must agree does feel like quite a long time ago now. 14 patients have been included within the 16 week program during that time. And three patients had to terminate the evaluations early uh, and two are still ongoing. So I'm actually looking and give, presenting the data from nine of the patients that we've completed the trials with. Um, just to note that the patients that actually had to um, withdraw early, uh, one of them unfortunately had a fall and fractured um, their hip and had to go into hospital. Another lady was unable to come in due to um, osteoarthritis for evaluation. And a third patient actually had a diagnosis of pyoderma gangrenosum and went on to a different pathway of treatment. So the wound express for our patients was used um, for two hours a day and the patients kept a patient diary, uh, which I think that really empowered them to feel that they were in control of their, of managing when they were going to use the pain of the wound express. Some patients would use it for the two hours um, together in the evening. Others would actually write down, they'll have an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening. So it fitted in very much within their lifestyle. The reported outcomes of reduction in wound size and pain um, was on all of our nine patients within this data. So here you can see our results on reduction in pain and healing. And um, all of the nine patients um, had 100% reduction in pain noted. So that was obviously a fabulous start. And then looking at a wound healing. So if we think about the wound healing, 45%, uh, which actually equated to four of our patients, they had total wound healing within the 16 week period. We then had a 22%, a which was two patients had greater than 75% healing within that 16 week period. And then finally, we had 33%, which equated to three of our patients had a greater than 25% wound healing. So we can see that all nine of the patients actually did achieve some reduction or total healing of their wounds. So what do we like about the Wound Express? I think the main thing is, is that it is unique. And as Keith has already said, it's on the thigh. So we love it that it's on the thigh and it's not applied over the ulcer site. That's very important for our patients rather than asking them to apply something over what can already be quite a painful area. It's used as an adjunct therapy. Well, it is for us anyway. So we used the wound express uh, alongside the compression. So our patients either had compression bandaging, they had um, compression wraps, and patients can have it with hose, but within our cohort, they all had compression bandaging or wraps. All the patients had a very positive experience. Uh, as I've already said, they all noted a reduction of pain and the wound size of, obviously was also recorded. And finally, the ease of application uh, and the empowerment for our patients uh, and its suitability for home management. So we actually enabled some of our patients to remain on uh, the Wound Express during COVID when obviously we had to switch from patients coming into the clinic and then being managed at home. And some patients we actually started on the pathway um, in their home environment. So they actually felt that they were empowered to actually continue on with some active treatment while still being um, cared for in their home. So within our patient pathway, initially, because obviously we were um, under evaluation, we were looking at the management of patients with 
venous leg ulceration alongside compression therapy. So use it as an adjunct to those patients with venous leg ulcers. We have, however, seen some very positive results on patients with mixed etiology, and two of our patients had foot ulceration as well. In the future, we have actually already started now, we've actually started a patient that has sickle cell ulceration. I think because we've had such grand results uh, with the pain reduction and sickle cell patients that have sickle cell ulceration, one of the main features is this uh, intense pain they suffer. So we're trying that to see if obviously it will help pain. Any reduction in wound size will obviously be a benefit as, as well. And chronic edema and lymphedema. So within Accelerate, we manage both wound patients and patients with lymphedema. And we're going to be starting to have a look at those patients that have chronic swelling to see if they, we can actually find a reduction in edema. We have noted that some patients have had a reduction, but at this stage, we haven't actually been measuring it. But I think in the future, we'll start measuring um, reduction in edema. And finally, it will be obviously within self-management and shared care with local services. So it's something that we're going to try and um, ensure that when we're sharing our care um, with other local services, that they also think about um, using the Wind Express and, and purchasing so that they can continue on their care when they're not actually directly under Accelerate. And finally, what's going to be the most powerful thing of ever is obviously the patient's journey. And uh, in the words of Florence Nightingale, let each person tell the truth from his, or in this case, it's going to be from her own experience. So I'm now delighted to hand over to our lovely patient, Susan, who's going to tell you in her own words what she thinks of the Wound Express. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Karen. Um, my journey with Wound Express, I'd had this, I'd had ulcers before, so I was... I was looking that the ulcer that I had that started in January would last me as long as the last one did, which was just under 14 months. Admittingly, I had sepsis within that as well. So I was looking to the ulcer being a long-term thing. I was treated at first by my own GP with compression bandages and at home. And then I was contacted to come to Accelerate. Um, I came, uh, then COVID started, so I was treated at home over the phone with phone um, appointments, et cetera. Then I was asked if I would try the Wound Express. I came to the clinic, um, got seen to, picked up the machine, and I was very, very sceptical because I thought, how can this do all these great things that the people are telling me? But I went home, it was quite easy. It's like a cuff for a blood pressure, but you put it round your thigh. Um, it's easy to put on. Um, it's a double chamber thing. It's on a four minute cycle. It increases and decreases during that cycle and goes on and on until you, until you obviously turn it off, but you're on it for two hours. The feeling is like, laying in a shallow pool and the water lapping around your leg. It, it relaxes you greatly. Sometimes you go to sleep, but I was still sceptical. It took, it's a, lot, um, a good piece of kit. It took a couple of weeks to get going because the ulcer on my leg was the size of a teacup saucer. And I did have an infection in it at first, but once that was treated, subsided and gradually gradually over the weeks the wound got smaller much to my surprise because I didn't think it how could something so simple uh, create such healing so quickly and within the space I started with the wound express on the 1st of June and by the second week in August my ulcer was completely gone and nobody was more surprised than me um, other than that, I still continue with the compression bandages and the wraps because my lower limbs have bad circulation and I've got rheumatoid arthritis in my feet, so it's got an ongoing thing. But I was so, so pleased and grateful that I've been offered this chance to use this machine. Susan, that's absolutely exceptional. Um, thank you, genuinely, thank you so much for your involvement. And I know 
um, that the patient's voice hasn't been heard enough um, in the world of wounds. So having you come on today, I know that's taking great courage and it's massively appreciated from me and everyone here. Um, Karen, Alison, Keith, thank you guys very much. We've had loads of comments and loads of questions from um, quite a large audience actually. So I'm over the moon about that. So do you mind if I crack on? Because I want to make sure we work within our time limits. What I'll do is I will ask the question and, and pose it for one of you guys. But if anyone else wants to chip in, please feel free. So question number one, let's start with Alison. Who would fund this therapy? Oh, right, okay. Um, so, so this is a rentable system. So you have this 16 week program. So Huntley can provide you with um, rental costs. And, you know, if you have a, a, a you know, a, a more of a larger number of costs, then obviously that's adjusted and things like that. But, you know, you, you have to think, you have to look at this and look at the healing rates and then you have to, so if you put in a business case forward or something like that, or you, I mean, think of it in terms of like when we rent topical negative pressure, you know, for wounds, um, you know, it's, it's the, the, the cost when it's broken down is really, really cost effective. And when you think of the journey of the patient and that, you know, the, the whole costs of that of that journey, you know, we do it in pressure ulcers, don't we? If you think of it in, in leg ulcer terms, it's phenomenal cost. We've got figures from the burden of wound care. So we need to do that calculation and we put that forward to our senior management. It might be CCGs if we're in community and we, you know, we can create that case. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, it, it speaks for itself. So, you know, Huntley will be able to give you accurate costs. I can't think of the exact costs from the top of my head. I don't know if Karen has a, any comment on that either from Accelerate. Not, not specifically for the cost, because at the moment, obviously, we're using the machines on evaluation. So um, we haven't actually purchased any directly at present. Brilliant, guys. Question two. Um, so Karen, I'll ask you, if possible, can this therapy be used on any lower limb wound or just hard to heal? Okay, well, usually when we get something new, what do we do? We want to put it on our worst case scenario. So we do tend to use it on the hardest case possible, we expect to have great results. I think it's really important that um, if I look at my data, the healing data, the patients that um, healed very quickly within the 16 weeks all had quite, uh, we, we instigated very early on in their management. Uh, the patients that had perhaps just greater than 25% healing are those ones that are the very chronic wound healers. So those patients actually tended to have leg ulceration greater than five years. And as you can see, it was still actually turning the tide and it was making a change for them. So I do think it can be used at any level, but I think the earlier you instigate it, definitely the better. But, you know, at any time along that healing trajectory, it's going to be good for that patient. So don't just leave it for your most chronic wounds. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so question three. Thank you, Mel, for this. Um, Keith, this is for you. Why is that only suggested to use for two hours daily? Is it not recommended or a benefit to use for longer each day to heal quicker? Can you use it for two one hour sessions or does it need to be one continuous session? Good question, but the simple answer to that is that it's, uh, I understand that the decision around two hours came uh, based on what they felt patients could withstand. Uh, two hours laid down with you plugged into the device uh, is practically acceptable. Probably the uh, time at which you would spend uh, watching TV in an evening for many people. Yes, you can split it up. Yes, you could probably get even more effects if you put it on for longer than two hours. But at this moment in time, you're trading off uh, what means something that means you can have a reasonable quality of life, carry on with your normal activities, as well as having active treatment at some point during the day. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, Susan, we've got a question for you. So you may need to unmute yourself. Um, I fear you could be getting more than one. So this is from Bob. So Susan, how did the treatment fit into your daily activities? It fitted in okay because I used to sit down in the evening to watch TV, strap my leg up and put my leg up and away you go. I'm also diabetic, so I didn't expect any good results. You know, I was so really, really so surprised. So easy to put on, relaxes you. Some in some of the two-hour periods, I fall asleep, but um, 
it also, strangely enough, fills your bladder. So pumping of up, up and down your leg when you're two hours is up, you need to sort of like immediately go to the loo. That's when the it, sensation. Thank you, Susan. Um, so next question from Joe for Karen. Is it to be used at home or in a clinic applied by a nurse or a patient? Okay, so the idea is this is home therapy. So we always do a demonstration normally in the clinic if they're coming into the clinic, but we could quite easily do that demonstration at home. And then we would teach either the patient or a patient's carer or a family member to actually um, assist with the application removal if they had a difficulty. Um, but in practice, that all of our patients that we've chosen and who have agreed to take part have actually been able to do this independently without any support from anybody else because it's got very clear guidance and instructions come with it. And obviously we actually give patient education before they take it home to make sure. We actually do get them to put it on and off, turn the machine on and off. And unlike a lot of other machines, there is only an on off button. So they don't have the, the risk of actually turning the, it too high or too low. So it's just on or off. So yes, it's, it's suitable for patients to manage in the home environment. Brilliant, Karen, thank you. Um, so next one, um, Keith, for you from Bell. Thank you, Bell, for the question. Is this the same as the one used after surgery, is the question. Uh, this is not the same device that's used after surgery that I'm aware of, where you use it on the lower leg. This is used on the thigh. Uh, and as was mentioned in the presentations, the great thing about this is you're not interfering directly with what is going on on the lower leg in terms of bandages and dressings or stockings. What you're doing is assisting venous return uh, by improving the efficiency of venous return from the thigh. Uh, one of the, and it's the reason I started off talking about swollen legs is although in my experience to date we've used it mainly on people with venous disease and mixed arterial venous disease, this is something that you may well over time as a result of experience and published uh, data be able to use it on a range of other clinical conditions where you have a swollen leg and ulcers present or certainly for lymphedema practitioners, even if they've got a, a lower leg and they're struggling to get patients into conventional forms of compression that they would use uh, to produce benefits for the patient. Thanks, Keith. Um, Susan, you're back on. Um, so next question for Susan. Susan, did it help with the pain? Yes, it did. But in the beginning, I had two lots of pain. And because I had antibiotics as well, it's not painful, it's about, the actual wrap itself is about the size of a small hand towel that's attached to the tubing, it's attached to the machine. You just wrap like a hand towel bit around the top of your thigh and the gentle pulsing does ease the pain. Brilliant, thank you, Susan. Um, so Karen, you're up next. And this is a follow up to the previous question. Um, which I believe was around using at home or in the clinic or applied by nurses or patients. Is this your experience with other patients too? Other patients? I think what? it's implying, I mean, based on the fact that Susan's currently in a clinic, have you seen this being successful at home as well as in the clinic? Uh, the thing is, although Susan's in the clinic now, Susan actually took, we don't actually, none of our patients stay in the clinic for their therapy. They all just come in, they're assessed, they're educated, they take the machine with them and their diary with them. And then they usually come back to the clinic on a every two weeks just for monitoring. And if they are unable to come back to the clinic every two weeks, um, and especially during COVID period, we actually then did a telephone triage. So if the patients are able to, they'd send us a picture in, um, if not, um, that if they could measure or if there was a family member, so we'd still be able to have a look at the outcomes, but the patients then would just continue with their diary. And then uh, on occasions, obviously, we actually sent nurses out to then to actually evaluate in, the, in their own home if we wanted to bring the machine back, etc. at the end of evaluation. So, so no, um, although our patients have the instigated from the clinic, this can be instigated within a community setting. Don't, they don't have to come into clinic to commence this. Fantastic. Um, Keith, question for you from a specialist based in the community. Do you think this is something we will all be using in the future? I can't guarantee, but if 
Well, I was a betting man. I think there is a place for this in a wide range of clinical situations that we find. <clears throat> and I see this, although at the moment being used as an adjunct to standard compression, I see this could replace a number of uh, ways in which we might actually deal with leg wounds uh, by assisting venous return by not squeezing just on the calf, but squeezing on the thigh. Uh, because venous return is one of the major reasons why patients get swollen legs. If you have a swollen leg with a wound on it, in my opinion, uh, that they will never heal until you have the swelling under control. Yep, agreed. Uh, Alison, this one's for you. Do you see this could have a place with lymphedema patients? I, I certainly do. And I know at Accelerate, as Karen said, they're going to be doing some uh, research and, and study around that. Um, absolutely, as Keith just said, you know, it, it helps with, with the swelling. So I think that's a, a fantastic place. And given that we have a lot of lymphedema patients who can't access lymphedema services because there's a big lack of them um, in, in the country, um, you know, then, then anything that will benefit, you know, for them and their conditions. And I think this will be, um, you know, massively used in that area. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, question 11 for Karen and Keith. Um, so Karen, we'll start with you. What's your views on its impact on pain relief? Um, for us, very positive. That's why we're now actually looking at um, that cohort of patients that has a lot of problems with pain, which is obviously, as I said earlier, patients that have sickle cell disease and sickle cell ulceration. And as all nine of our patients within the data collected all had a, a very positive impact and reduction of pain, then for me, that's, that has to be a game changer because that's quality of life issues, which is so important um, for our patients. My view is that it has significant potential for pain, and this is based on experience, not based on evidence to date, but the index case that gave me the aha moment was a, a long-standing patient of mine who has complex venous disease, uh, who has to work, and his work involves him standing all day. Uh, when we first started uh, using it, he was using uh, oral opioids to control his pain, and within two weeks, we reduced him to paracetamol. Now, I don't think that was necessarily magic. I just think the fact that his pain was probably uh, predominantly driven by the amount of swelling in his leg because his job involved him standing all day for eight hours at the time. Uh, and by using this device for two hours in, in the evening, he was able to do his day's work, uh, come home, uh, and rather than be filling himself full of opioids, is having some simple analgesia, uh, which... Uh, he felt marvellous about because he felt so much better in himself because he didn't have the side effects of the opiates uh, and he didn't have the pain. Thank you. Uh, so next question for Alison from Sandy. Thank you. Sandy, thank you. Thinking this would not be suitable for housebound patients who may find it difficult to apply. What are your thoughts? Oh, no, absolutely not. Total contrary <laughs> totally wrong we've had that you know we that my case study was a patient who came into clinic but as per you know karen's number of patients not just susan who's here today um our lady was doing this at home we also had a housebound patient who district nurses were seeing who we we we, we um, ha also had a trial with the device with and he, he was applying it himself quite successfully you know that that's the beauty of it you know it's so easy to use so it can be used you know that's the idea really is that patients then can have the autonomy and they're getting a, a, a you know a, a better therapy and, and treatment alongside that so so yeah no 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 that's exactly the, where we're aiming it at. Alison thank you. Karen you're up. Do the district nurses have to apply and return two hours later to remove? No, because it, it's the idea is it is for the patients to manage. We wouldn't be expecting the district nurses to go in and do that. So we would really, uh, well, from an Accelerate point of view, we'd actually only be wanting to loan out to patients that can self-manage or they have carers or family to support that. It's, the idea is not to actually burden the nurses with something else to do We're in an already stretched um, you know, shift. So, and it's something we want to empower the patients with. So, so no to that. 
Karen, thank you. We have two questions left. Um, one for you, Karen, from Melanie, and then we'll leave the last question for Susan. So, Karen, has compliance improved with patients being an active member of their care re regime as opposed to a patient simply receiving the treatment? So I think that because they feel in control, because they're completing a diary, because you're giving, you're entrusting them with something to actually give the onus on them to actually sit, apply and, and document when they're going to use it, then I think this, that will support patients um, buying into the therapy. But everything is, you know, it's like you sell a therapy, you sell the therapy to the patient. I think if you understand how it's going to work and you can explain and educate your patient and Hopefully we did that with Susan. If we can explain to the patient how it's going to work, then yes, they'll buy into the treatment and they're quite happy and they'll feel empowered um, with that knowledge. Thank you, Karen. And last, but by no means least, Susan, the last question for you. Susan, could you please summarize what Wound Express has meant to you? Wound Express has healed my arms from in a minimal amount of weeks and given my life back because before I was in such a lot of pain, like to watch, like couldn't bump your leg or was overly cautious of going out anywhere in case somebody bumped against my leg and even though it was bandaged up, uh, there's always that chance that somebody will knock it and it will get worse before it gets better. Wound Express, I just want to shout it from the rooftops. I can't understand there's something so simple easy to apply at home, you're in charge of it yourself, has done what to me is like magic tricks in like 10 weeks, got rid of it. I just can't believe it. It's such, such a simple idea that's just done wondrous things. And now I can get back and do things, well, get out and go out or without fear of anybody knocking your leg. Susan, I'm, thank you so much. I know that um, the team at Huntley, I know we all are very grateful for your support today, but also for you sharing those honest thoughts. And I'm really glad that you're in such a better position. So thank you for your time today. And thank you, everyone. Alison, Karen, Keith, I thought the event was absolutely brilliant. Um, as I can see by the comments and kind words coming through, so did our audience. So thank you so much for your engagement for that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the certificate for attendance is now available for download. So click on the link and you can download it there. For any more information on events and education, please feel free to visit our jcn.co.uk website. Um, there's loads more Facebook Lives available through that. Um, so that concludes our first ever virtual lunchtime meeting. Um, to our speakers, Susan, Alison, Karen, Keith, thank you very much. Genuinely, thank you. I really appreciate your support. Um, again, thank you to Huntley for partnering our first ever virtual lunchtime meeting. I think it's gone brilliantly. I think there's huge information there for our audience. So thank you for your trust in us. Um, to Mole a Digital and to the JCN team, well done on another brilliant event. And last, but by no means least, to our audience. Thank you for joining our first ever um, one of these. You continue to inspire me and the team. Please stay safe, stay strong, and we'll see you all very soon. Thank you so much and goodbye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.